before getting into the meat and potatoes of painting this little razor wing ship, I want to talk about the base that I built real quick because it'll be easier if I can just randomly talk about it and show everything off at the same time. Uh, I did not want to use the giant flight stand that came with the kit because although it's stable, it is very huge. And I wanted to go with something a bit more subtle, so I'm using a brass tube. Now, uh, I do prefer to use tubes whenever possible because you can do little tricks like I'm going to show you. And also, they tend to be in some way stronger than the same size rod. Um, rods tend to bounce more, tubes are a bit more stiff. Um, the size of the tube that you can use really doesn't matter. This one, I, I'm not sure the exact size, uh, but it is uh, a little thicker. I'm not sure why I grabbed this large one, um, but it works. Uh, but you can go a little bit smaller if you like. Uh, I drilled a hole through the base and I also have it glued it in place and currently I got everything covered with epoxy putty so to really lock everything into position. Uh, the bottom of the tube I use my Dremel to uh, sand it down at a slight angle so there's a bit more material for it to uh, cling onto and so it's kind of cut flush with the base. And on the other side I cut a little notch again with my Dremel which for reasons I'll explain in a moment. The bottom side of the ship and um, I filled in the hole where the standard mounting thing goes and props to GW for giving a little plug to fill that in because I wasn't going to do this if I had to putty and sand all this down so good job on them. But anyway, uh, drilled a hole slightly larger than the rod and inside there I have another aluminum tube slightly larger than this one. This one is 3 16 I know that one. So this tube is whatever size smaller, one size smaller down um, than the 3 16 whatever that is. Anyway, I cut a little sliver, it's about half an inch or so, and glued it and puttied it into place and then I just have to slide it in here to mount the ship. Now the problem with tubes and rods is they tend to spin around. So that's the reason why the notch is here. When I get everything painted and before I put it all together I want to put some epoxy putty on this side and then when I put it together this notch will force an imprint into the epoxy putty here and uh, basically it'll kind of act like a notch and a little key joint and that will prevent it from spinning once the epoxy putty is dry. So once you get everything together, the whole point of this of course is easier storage so instead of storing a big ship like this I only have to store two shorter pieces. But uh, that's it and there we go, there's the ship mounted. And the cool thing right now, it looks like a mousetrap game. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Now it's time to get on to the actual painting. I primed the ship with some all clad gray primer. And then once that was dry, I went over with some black and just hit a few patches here and there just to get some variation to the overlaying rust color, which I am applying now. The rust is a mix of Vallejo Air model air paints. Uh, some armor brown mixed with hull red and a little black. I did want a dark rust color uh, rather than a, a lighter or a brown or a red color. Um, and I'm just spraying that over and doing it a little blotchy uh, on purpose so some of the black shows through and some of the gray primer shows through just to give some variation to the rust color when we get to the uh, end portion. I then masked off the areas of the ship that would eventually be red and over the current areas that are visible, uh, which are going to be blue-gray, I airbrushed on some hairspray and uh, your standard everyday hairspray, it doesn't matter what brand, uh, this came from a old-fashioned pump bottle, not an aerosol can, so I can just pour it right into the uh, airbrush. Um, when doing it this way, it you really need to do it light coats if you have masking because you don't want the hairspray to uh, go on too wet and uh, form a line where it hits the tape. So doing it through an airbrush uh, makes it a lot easier to do very light coats. Next comes our main base coat color which is Vallejo model color dark blue gray and uh, trying to keep it light because I don't want it too thick because eventually we're going to be removing these layers. If I do it too thick it 
makes it harder to come off or it comes off in large chunks. Um, so just a light coat, a couple light coats, and trying to leave a little bit of the brown showing up in the recesses just so there's a little bit of color variation. Uh, not too much because it is a fairly flat ship. There's no deep recesses to keep any uh, darker colors in. To start working on the highlights, I mixed in a very tiny amount of Vallejo Game Color Magic Blue to the previous Dark Blue Gray. And this is where I royally screwed up and I did not realize it until way later in the project. My highlight color for my Dark Eldar is Electric Blue, not Magic Blue. Unfortunately, that's what happens when you're working on so many projects at once, uh, especially when they're both involving blue. Um, so yeah, I grabbed the wrong color. I didn't realize it until much later in the project, but uh, we'll keep going from this point since I didn't know uh, what I did wrong at the time. And then we airbrush on two more layers of highlights, each time adding a little bit more of game color Wolf's Gray and working our way towards the uh, edges of the model. And uh, what I found with the Vallejo, especially the model colors, they do not airbrush very well because they have a tendency to separate. So every time I went to add another color, I actually dumped all the paint out of the brush into a little, little jar and uh, mixed it up, everything up, and then poured it back in. I never let it settle inside the paint cup for more than a couple minutes. Uh, once I was done, pour it out in the jar, mix it up again, add the new color, put it back, and continue airbrushing. Uh, and that helped to prevent the Vallejo paint from separating out. I let the whole thing dry for about an hour. You don't want to let it dry too long if we're doing when doing the hairspray technique. And then uh, I started working on the chips. And what we do is just put a use a brush, put a little, and I do say little amount of water onto the ship. Let it soak in for about 30 seconds or so, and then just start working at the paint with a blunt toothpick, or you can also use a brush, um, various tools you can use. And the water will soak in through the paint and reactivate the hairspray and will loosen up that top layer of paint. So that causes the previous rust layer to come through. And it is a very slow process. Don't rush it, and especially don't use too much water. Uh, the more water you, you use, the more paint is going to come off. And um, one thing you have to realize, the longer the water sits on, the softer the paint gets as well. So uh, you may work on one area and then work on another area and go back to the previous one. And by that time, the paint's gotten super soft and you think you have to know the pressure to remove the paint. But when you go back to it, like a huge swath will come off. So uh, work in little bits, but uh, take your time. Like I said, use a toothbrush. Uh, a short bristled brush works as well, but you have to be cautious with that. And uh, I'm just trying to remove the paint from all the areas where you would think you would have rust. So along the edges, some of the larger panels, but mainly trying to keep them uh, in clusters so they look more realistic. With the main body done, I now have to paint the rest of the ship, so I taped off all the blue areas and then gave those areas a light, couple light coats of hairspray like before, and now I'm proceeding to paint all those areas with some Vallejo Air Red. For the highlights, I'm using Vallejo Air Ferrari Red. And uh, had to do several light coats because red is a very transparent color, which does make it difficult when you're using the hairspray technique because you don't want to put on thick layers if you plan on taking it off using hairspray later. So I uh, had to do several coats, slowly building up the colors towards the edges, but also keeping in mind uh, not doing it too thick. Otherwise, I would have problems getting it off later. And again, just like before, removing the paint now, a little bit of water and some toothpicks or uh, carefully some brushes because I'm working on the edges and the front of the ship. I am trying to take off more paint than I did with the blue, considering that those, those are the areas that are going to get scratched and dinged up the most. The hairspray method gives some good large chips 
uh, showing rust, but uh, I wanted some small little dings and dents as well. So I took a little piece of a silk sponge, dipped it in some flat brown paint, and just proceeded to uh, stipple it all over the areas, concentrating on the areas that were already exposed, the rusty areas exposed from the hairspray, just to, give, uh, to spread out the pattern and make it look a bit more realistic. I like using a silk sponge. You can also use a uh, little piece of a scotch bright pad or even the foam that you get in uh, some miniature blister packs. I then repeated the same process again, but using Vallejo Panzer Aces Light Rust to get some variation and concentrating on the areas where there were large uh, scratches already put into the model. So uh, using it on a smaller surface area, just trying to highlight the bigger scratches, not going over everything with this lighter color. I then mixed some of my original base color, Vallejo model color, dark blue gray, and mixed it with a large amount of game color wolf's gray, and proceeded to add some highlights to the underside of the larger scratched areas. And the goal here is to give them all the little scratches, well some of the scratches, some depth so they look like they're actually gouged into the ship. And I'm just concentrating on, I'm not doing everything, uh, just the larger scratches and just adding little dots essentially. I'm not trying to draw a line all the way across, um, but give the idea that the paint is peeling off and um, there's some color variation and that contrast gives a depth to those scratches. And uh, it's, it's easier if you work in dots, just kind of stab very gently with the brush, with a very small brush and not going over everything because I can't highlight those big scratches, excuse me, those small scratches anyway, so just concentrating on uh, the larger ones. And then I used the exact same technique on the red areas as well, using my original Vallejo Model Air red color mixed in with a little bit of Vallejo Model Color sunny skin tone. And again, just applying it to the bottom of the larger scratches, um, not all the way around all the scratches. Um, so it looks like we're getting some highlights, some depth to those scratches. The ship, I decided needed a little bit of color. So I decided to paint some soul stones, some cracked soul stones on it. And yes, I know these are not supposed to be soul stones, but I need to color. So I undercoated with some flat red, and then I proceeded to use a very small brush and black paint and just very carefully paint some cracks into the soul stone. Then using flat red mixed in with a little bit of Lejo model color deep yellow, I proceeded to start adding some highlights highlighting along those black cracks that I previously painted. And then I added a second highlight, again by adding more deep yellow to the previous mix and painting closer and closer to all those black cracks. If uh, you do make a mistake when painting these and paint over the black, you can just clean it up at the end. It's no big deal. Just repaint the black cracks. I continue to highlight the soul stones, uh, again adding more yellow each time and working my way closer toward the cracks, being more careful to get a thin, uh, perfect line so I get a nice contrast between the lighter color and the black. And I did this about five or six times and I'm not, not exactly sure how many. And there is our finished cracked soul stone. I decided it was a little bit too bright for the dirty banged up ship that I was painting. So I gave it two very light coats of a red ink glaze once I was done. I repeated the exact same process on the rest of the soul stones instead using blue. However, I decided that that made it way too busy. So I went over it again with my original base coat color. And this is when I suddenly realized that I used the wrong blue when I first painted the ship. Uh, so this is being highlighted with the correct uh, electric blue instead of magic blue. And um, 
by the way, repainting these was not a big deal because uh, even if I didn't paint these blue at first, I would still repaint all these little oval nodules because I want to re-highlight them uh, as opposed to the flat highlights that are on the overall ship uh, because these are sticking out. Uh, they do need a little bit extra attention anyway, so repainting them was... I would have to do it anyway, so it's no big deal. I decided to have a little bit of fun with the bottom of the ship since it's going to be virtually invisible anyway. I gave it a undercoat of Leho Game Color Cold Gray mixed in with some khaki, and then once that was fully dry, I added little bits of Tamiya tape to do a very rough Aztec pattern, um, just to add some variation to it. Uh, and then once all the tape was on, I covered the whole thing with Vallejo Game Color Cold Gray, straight cold gray. And then once that was dry, I added even more tape and then sprayed the whole thing again with a mixture of Vallejo Game Color Cold Gray and Model Color German Gray. And then all I had to do was pull off all the tape and I have a nice little funky looking Aztec pattern. Uh, this was an experiment in two ways. I just wanted to have fun with this. Uh, also, uh, I did hairspray, use the hairspray method on this piece earlier. Uh, I was not sure how the tape would affect the hairspray. Um, it worked 98% well. Uh, tape did pull up a little bit of paint because of the hairspray underneath. Um, however, I would call it effective. Um, overall it was effective so after pulling off all the tape I did add some rust to this using water and toothpicks again just like you've seen twice before already I want to briefly mention the glass canopy uh, yes of course it was painted um, trying to get it to match uh, all the weathering that I did on the rest of the ship was quite difficult uh, I had to kind of mix up a custom uh, mixture of paint to match the weathering that was on the rest of the ship, but I started with the uh, original uh, dark blue gray color mixed in with some various browns and wolf grays and uh, painted by hand. I did tape off what will be the clear areas of the canopy using uh, a mixture of tape and humbral mascal. It was my intention not to use my AK Interactive enamel wash. That I've been using so often lately on this model. However, since I used the wrong color blue when applying the highlights and that blue was uh, very bright, uh, the ship was not matching the rest of my army so I needed to tone it down. So I gave the whole thing, after giving it a, a couple gloss coats of uh, acrylic gloss coats to protect the paint, I gave it a couple coats, or excuse me, one coat of AK Interactive enamel wash. It was track wash mixed in with a little bit of rust streaks. Even though I intended not to even use the enamel wash, uh, I actually really liked how it uh, came out on the ship. Uh, first of all, it didn't turn the paint green like it did when I did the jet bikes, mainly because I did just one very light coat and also uh, I really went heavy on the uh, gloss coat for this to uh, protect the paint underneath. However, um, when removing this, uh, I left a lot of the wash on uh, much more than I would normally do, uh, so I didn't use a hundred Q-tips getting it out of the nooks and crannies. Basically, I left it in all the nooks and crannies, and uh, mainly just used a t-shirt to uh, wipe it off, but uh, you'll see when we get toward these end uh, where I left a lot of this brown color still on. The enamel wash has to dry for a couple days before getting dull coated. Uh, in the meantime, finishing up the canopy, uh, I do mention Pledge Future Floor Shine a lot on this channel. One of the things you can do it for is taking care of uh, cleaning up plastic canopies on fighters and what have you. Uh, you just brush it on and it'll fill in any little scratches on uh, clear plastic, so it's uh, very good. Uh, using it for these situations right here. Just make sure you don't paint in any air bubbles.
After the ship is dull coated, the last thing to do is to glue the canopy in place. You can use just ordinary white glue with that and a toothpick just to run a very small bead around the uh, edges wherever the canopy is going to go and just pop it into place and then use a wet q-tip or a wet brush to clean up any uh, excess glue that squishes out. Uh, but with that, we are done. And with that, we are done. Uh, this was a fun project, actually. Uh, it took a long time trying to individually highlight all those little chips and nicks and rust spots. It does take a long time to do. Um, and also there is a lot of masking and various layers that I put on the ship. But uh, overall, uh, it's a good addition to my Dark Eldar Wasteland Raiders. And just for the record, the base here is not done yet. It's uh, made out of tree bark in case you're wondering, but I've still yet to decide what sort of vegetation I'm going to be adding to it. But uh, with that, we are done and uh, see you next time. Thanks for watching.